What's going on guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about a tool that I use all the time uh, for creating sequence diagrams, flow charts, a whole bunch of other diagrams as well. And the tool is called Plant UML. And so we're on a website right now that's meant to show you what you can do with this tool. Uh, but before we get into what you can do with it and how it works and all that, I wanna to explain to you the problem that it solves. So prior to using this tool, I would use uh, things like draw.io or Microsoft Visio to create uh, sequence diagrams. A sequence diagram is something like this over here, where you kind of define the relationship between different components. Obviously, I would never use French. But when you're using a tool like draw.io or Visio or whatever, you, you would imagine what that looks like. You need to kind of lay out how everything is going to be set up and how everything will look. You also got to name these things and connect all the uh, vertices so that everything looks how you imagined it. And you know, while you're halfway through your project and you create this really complicated diagram, something changes, maybe you have a meeting and it goes in a different direction. Now you need to kind of delete a component. And what does that look like? You gotta delete the thing, redraw all the arrows, maybe some things aren't relevant anymore. Uh, it, it just becomes a very time consuming process for you to rebuild your diagram. You have to waste all this time worrying about the semantics of how things are connected and making sure everything looks nice. Uh, so I got really sick and tired of that and I started looking for alternatives and that's when it comes to Plant UML. Uh, so Plant UML is an absolutely free tool to use. You can actually download it on their website and I'll show you a little bit about that later. Uh, but on this website, it shows you kind of the things that you can do with Plant UML. And the things that I use the most are sequence diagrams. They look like, like these guys to define the relationships between components. Also lets you do things like um, class diagrams or the kind of relationships of packages. Uh, on this website, it's actually really cool. These are just random submissions that people have created with plant uml and this thing kind of lays them out for you so you can see uh, how they created them so for instance i don't know this blue one looks pretty cool let's click on that uh, so this is a state machine, um, it looks like, or kind of an activity diagram maybe. And it shows you the syntax of how you would do this. So this one looks a little bit complicated. Maybe you want to look at something a little bit easier. Uh, maybe for, uh, where is it? Maybe use case or sequence diagrams. That's what I want. So a sequence diagram like this, this is a little bit more easy. And this is actually the greatest part. The part that I love about Plant UML the most is that it's just a text block. You don't actually um, draw anything. It uses a background engine to read the input of the text, put together a visualization of it, and then spit it out on your screen. So you can very easily add and remove different things just by adding different lines here, as opposed to having to introduce new boxes and connect them and all that. Uh, so it's super, super powerful for all sorts of different applications like I said. Now, a kind of negative thing about this is that you lose a little bit of control in terms of how things are laid out. And this is especially obvious for things like large state machine diagrams or large flow machine diagrams and things like that. Um, part of the benefit of using this tool is that you get to define things as text, but part of the negative is that you kind of lose some control in the way that things are laid out. You kind of just have to rely on the engine uh, to lay them out in the most intuitive way. Now that being said, you do have a little bit of influence on how things get laid out. Uh, you can kind of say you want certain components to go to the left of another component or the right of another component. So there's a little bit of flexibility there. Again, I just wanted to mention that in case you were wondering. So let's head over to the Plant UML website. Um, and I just kind of want to show you a demonstration of how I kind of use this on the day to day. So I'm just at plantuml.com and I'm just on the home page right now. And uh, the thing that I like about this website, let's actually just kind of skirt around here to see what's going on. If you click on any of these top bars here, for instance, state in this example, um, not only does it show you some awesome examples of how this stuff works, so it gives you great templates so you can kind of build your own, um, but it also lets you edit it online. So you can just click this button and go to an editor and then you can kind of change anything. So this is another string. No, it's not. Um, and this should update, submit. Yeah, no, it's not. So, oop, and it's a PNG, so you can see I just dragged away that image. Uh, so this website's pretty convenient for that. Uh, how do I close this now? Back? Let's go back. Awesome. Um, so that's kind of what this website is about. It, it shows you kind of how these things work. It gives you some templates to use. It explains the semantics and the syntax of uh, how to kind of get some unique styles going as well. Okay, so here I am on the uh, homepage again, and let's scroll down here to this uh, demo where I can show you how I use this thing on the day to day. So as you can see here, it's just a very simple starting project here where Bob is talking to Alice and he's saying hello to Alice. Uh, so let's get rid of this and we can say um, participant, actually let's, let's start with actor, so actor user. 
Uh, so Actor gives you the kind of little stick figure here. Uh, if you want components to represent services, you may say uh, participant, and let's just call this thing transaction service in this case. Uh, you can see here that popped up as a square box. So let's say the user calls transaction service. So user um, transaction service and says uh, submit transaction, right? Something like that. And you can see that it uh, changed here, reflect that. And now our transaction service wants to do a whole bunch of things. Maybe it wants to send to an SNS topic and then save to a database, probably the other way around. So let's say uh, participant uh, DynamoDB and participant SNS. And then what we can say here now is transaction service to DDB, uh, save record, something like that. And let's just copy that, put that down here. And we also want to say um, it goes to SNS and says publishes notification, right? Something practical. And then it eventually will respond back to the user with an OK indicator. So, so you would say transaction service. I like to use a double arrow for the return. And uh, that goes to uh, user. And that's going to say OK. So this kind of shows you the kind of stuff that you can do with it. It's, it's a very, very useful tool. Um, and I use it all the time for sequence diagrams. Sequence diagrams are by far the most common thing that I use this for, but it's also great for state machines as well. I've built some pretty complicated state machines here. So that's kind of uh, what I use it for. And there's a whole bunch more to this. I just kind of showed you the very, very basic stuff for sequence diagrams. You can do things where like you activate blocks. You can do things for like if statements or switches. Um, you can kind of separate a diagram into two pieces if you want. You can actually use HTML to style these things in specific colors. And in some more recent versions, you can import certain styles. So things like um, AWS you know, diagrams or AWS icons rather. So DynamoDB icons, SNS icons, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with this. It's got a very active uh, community. So there's constantly improvements coming out and fixes for bugs and all that. Um, so that's kind of how you use it. I just want to copy this, put this to my notepad. And I want to show you the tool that I use the most in terms of when editing. So this tool is called Live UML, and I usually come to this when I kind of want to put together a diagram. Uh, this saves you from having to download the thing onto your local machine. Instead, you can just come to this tool and do whatever you want. In this case, I'm just pasting in what I had before, and it kind of spits this out. And then once you're done, you can kind of take this. Um, and I think if you actually sign up here, you can get a account that persists your diagrams, which is super, super useful. Now, the thing that I like about this website, Live UML the most, is that it gives you autocomplete. So you can see here when you type A, you get all this stuff. Uh, the problem that I have most of the time is that I can't remember the syntax. So this is a lifesaver for me. Um, this doesn't come by default in the tool, by the way. This is something that this tool, uh, Live UML, is offering as a feature. Also, it's got a bunch of different kind of um, examples here. So like if you want to use a person, it, show, it shows you how to do that. Uh, if you want to use a certain arrow type, maybe you like this arrow type, it shows you how to do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of things here. You know, if you want to create a loop, um, it shows you the syntax for that. So super, super useful stuff. Uh, again, this tool is called Plant UML, and you can download it or use it on Live UML. And the website that I was at for before was uh, plantuml.com. And then this website is just real world Plant UML um, right here. I'll let you copy this out of the video. Uh, so you can take a look here at what people are kind of creating as some inspiration. So you can see here, people have created some pretty complicated things with all sorts of colors and sections and fancy things and like this is what my diagram usually looks like something super simple like this or maybe it's got a bunch of components just with arrows but you know nothing fancy i'm a pretty simple guy anyways i hope you really enjoyed this video um, i use plant uml all the time i think more people need to know about it because this tool is absolutely awesome uh, so if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel and as always i will see you next time